Um, okay, uh, hello, and uh, starting on tonight, I will be streaming from a new place. So, uh, this is my setup, and let's start with uh, where we left off. Well, where we left off, uh, a few oops. The last part. Okay. Nervi one to eight. The solely sensory set. Here we will learn that the solely sensory set comprises N and one, two, and eight, which are solely involved in sensory function. First, let's review their specific functions. Indicate that nervous one, olfactory use, is responsible for smell detection. Indicate that nervous two, opticus, is responsible for vision. Indicate that nervous eight, vestibular cochlearis, is responsible for auditory and vestibular function. Now let's show the cranial nerves as they exit the brain stem. Draw chiasma opticum of nervous opticus, which is the bundle of crossing fibers of the op of the nervous opticus as it transitions to tractus opticus. We see that if the hypophyse enlarges, it can grow into an injury optic chiasm. Next, at the pontomedullary junction, draw nervous 8 vestibular cochlearis. We will skip nervous 1, um, which lies superior to the brain um, stem. Next, let's draw the axial radiographic orientation sections. Draw the pons and show the pontocerebellar fibers. Now draw medulla oblongata. Cut off its most anterior region with the medullary pyramids and in oliva inferior. Show that nucleus vestibulocochlearis nervus uh, it lies posterolaterally and stretches from the pons into the medulla. Note that its anatomy is actually more complex than we have presented throughout this chapter. It spans from the upper pons to the inferior floor of the fourth ventricle in the medulla oblongata and divides into medial and lateral divisions. The superior aspect of the medial division is the superior nucleus and the remainder is the medial nucleus. The top half of the lateral division is the lateral nucleus and the remainder in is the inferior nucleus. The lateral nucleus is also called dilators nucleus and the inferior nucleus is also called the descending nucleus. Medial, superior, medial, lateral, inferior, and lateral, lateral, As a further complicating factor, the lateral and inferior nuclei actually overlap in the low pons and the medial and superior nuclei overlap in the mid pons. Show that nervous aid and turns laterally at the pontomedullary junction. Now draw a mid sagittal brain stem and include the anterior face with an eyeball, frontal lobe, and temporal lobe. Let's set up the relevant anatomy surrounding nervous olfactorius.
the upper nasal cavity, which contain four factor three epithelium. The lamina cribrosa, which separates the cranial bulb from the nasal cavity. Just above lamina cribrosa, draw bulbus olfactorius, which transitions posteriorly to the olfactory tract. Then within the olfactory epithelium, draw a bipolar, draw a bipolar primary olfactory neuron, and show that nervous one extends through. Uh, lamina cribrosa to innervate the bulbus olfactorius. Note that this is the extent of nervous one olfactorius. The olfactory bulb and tract are the encephalic extensions of the cerebrum itself. Now for nervous opticus. Show that nervous opticus projects from the back of each eyeball and meets at the side of the uh, pituitary body where select fibers cross in the chiasma opticum. At that point, they transition into optic tracts which projects to the back of the brain. Finally, show that nucleus vestibulocochlearis spans from the upper pons to the mid medulla. It is widest within the upper medulla but narrow at its vertical extremes. Draw the foramen acousticus internus, meatus acousticus internus. Show that nervous aid passes through the foramen acousticus internus and enters the brainstem through the pontomedullary junction laterally. Stay with me. Okay, hello again and Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
setengah sampai tiga belas koma delapan enam koma tujuh koma enam sampai tiga belas koma delapan tujuh koma dua koma enam Sembilan koma no.
Yukuri. Dua belas. Koma dua lima. Sintai na. Dua belas koma empat lima. Aku aku si te ilu Imaga ichi bangda isuki Satu koma lima Ini mulai So is this empat koma tiga.
Kimi no koe orange ironi. It is Sanji to section.
So how is
Okay. Now we should move to the um, yeah. now we should move to the additional nodes. The midbrain. Nucleus ruber spans the midbrain and the upper midbrain. Injury in the vicinity of nucleus ruber can produce a low frequency, coarse postural and action tremor on the contralateral side of the body or a rubral tremor. Despite its name, which suggests a close relationship to the red nucleus, Rubral tremor can occur from injury to other brainstem areas as well and also from injury to the cerebellum and thalamus. Nucleus ruber receives fibers from both the motor cortex and cerebellum. Oops. Yeah. Each nucleus ruber connects with the ipsilateral inferior oliva. Oliva inferior as part of the triangle of Guyen Moyale. Guyen Moyale. Via the central tegmental tract. Structus tegmentalis centralis. And each rubus ruber also sends rubrospinal tract fibers down the brain stem and spinal cord to produce flexion movements of the upper extremities. Fibers from spedunculus cerebellaris superior, the major outflow tract of the cerebellum, decussate in the central midbrain tegmentum in the inferior midbrain, below the level of nucleus ruber. Injury to this crossing fibers produces cerebellar ataxia, 
on the left side of the body that the from the side of the fibers originated from regardless of where they are injured along their path injury to this crossing fibers produces cerebellar ataxia on the side of the body For instance, whether it happens pre or post decusation, injury to the superior cerebellar fibers from the right cerebellum produces ataxia on the right side of the body. Where is this again? Injury to this peripheral fibers. <laughs> Electrical stimulation of the periaqueductal gray area to produce an OJC was first attempted in the 1970s but has had mixed results. Of note, the periaqueductal gray area receives ascending spinomesencephalic fibers via the anterolateral system which play a role in the emotional aspect of pain and it receives descending fibers from the hypothalamus via the fasciculus longitudinalis dorsalis. Very aqueductal gray area functions include far-reaching modulation of sympathetic responses for example, pupillary dilation and cardiovascular response. Cardiovascular responses. Parasympathetic induced micturition, modulation of reproductive behavior, and even affect locomotion and vocalization. However, its most widely recognized function is in pain modulation. Initially, the indistinct histology of the reticular formation led people to believe it was simply a diffuse arousal network. But now, the function, but now the functional specialization of the reticular formation is well recognized. The tectospinal tract originates in the superior colliculus and decussates in the midbrain tegmentum and descends in front of the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Fasciculus longitudinalis medialis. Raptus tectospinalis. Both the fasciculus longitudinalis medialis and tractus tectospinalis maintain their posterior midline position throughout the head height of the brainstem. Regional stimulation of the superior colliculus stimulates efferent impulses through the tectobulbar tract to the brainstem for eye movement and through the tectospinal tract to the upper cervical nuclei. For visually directed neck and head movements. The pons. The inferior, the pedunculus cerebellaris inferior comprises the restiform and juxta restiform bodies. Spinocerebellar, reticulocerebellar, and olivocerebellar fibers pass through the restiform body. 
whereas the Yuxta restiform body primarily comprises fibers that pass between the vestibular nucleus and vestibular cerebellum. The superior cerebral, cerebellar peduncles, pedunculus cerebellaris superior attached to the upper pons and mesencephalon. Pedunculus cerebellaris media attach, attaches to the pons and extends to the pontomedullary junction and pedunculus cerebellaris inferior attaches to the lower pons and medulla. Not that although most heavily concentrated in the pons, locus queruleus actually spans from the caudal end of the periaqueductal gray area in the lower mesencephalon to the nucleus nervi facialis in the midpons. Medulla oblongata. We find anterior trigeminothalamic projections throughout the brainstem because the anterior trigeminothalamic tract is formed from the fibers of nucleus spinalis nervi trigemini, which extends inferiorly to the, into the upper cervical spinal cord. The anterolateral system includes the spinoreticular, spinomesencephalic, and spinotectal pathways. It carries spinoolivary and spinovestibular fibers, which disperse within the medulla itself. Varvik's model of the oculomotor complex. Here we, we see Varvik's model of the oculomotor complex in sagittal view. The lateral subnuclei from ventral to dorsal are as follows. The long, narrow ventral subnucleus innervates the rec musculus rectus medialis. Not that this is an oversimplification. In actuality, three separate oculomotor regions supply the medial rectus muscle. Above the ventral subnucleus lies the intermediate subnucleus, which innervates M. obliquus inferior. Above it lies the dorsal subnucleus, which innervates the infer M. rectus inferior. Medial to this subnuclei lies the medial subnucleus, which innervates the contralateral uh, M. rectus superior. Note, this subnucleus is commonly unnamed. Then, on the dorsocaudal surface, like the, lies the small central caudal subnucleus, which innervates the bilateral, bilateral, levatum levator palpebrae. On the rostral surface, like the visceral nuclei, which include the edinger vestfal nucleus, anteromedian nucleus, and the nucleus of perlia. Next, we address the perioculomotor cell group, which places the edinger vestfal nucleus, anteromedial nucleus, and nucleus of perlia into a larger context of neural substrate responsible for the accommodation reflex. The accommodation reflex, or near response, is a three-part reflex that brings near objects into focus through lens thickening, thickening, papillary constriction, and inward rotation of the eyes, eye conversions. Here we use, here we use a large, long nucleus to represent oral consolidation of the oculomotor complex. Note that this representation is excludes the visceral nuclei, which are shown as part of the perioculomotor cell group. Next, along the dorsal aspect of the oculomotor nucleus, we see the preganglionic perioculomotor cell group. Next, along the dorsal aspect of the oculomotor nucleus, we see the preganglionic perioculomotor cell group. The edinger vestfal nucleus lies within this part of the perioculomotor cell group. The preganglionic cell group is responsible for producing the lens thickening and pupillary constriction responses of the accommodation reflex. Next, along the rostral caudal length, length of the medial aspect of the nucleus uh, nervi oculomotorius, we see the motoneuron division of the perioculomotor cell group. It innervates the multi, the multi.
multiple inner the multiply innervated muscle fibers of the accommodation reflex. Okay, which produce the eye convergence response. The motor neuron division of the periocular motor cell group encompasses the anteromedian nucleus anteriorly and the nucleus of perlia in mid as in mid antero posterior position. Note that given the actual complexity of this nuclear complex, we should not attempt to draw discrete functional meaning from the positions of the Edinger Westphal nucleus, anteromedian nucleus, and nucleus of perlia from this diagram. These nuclei are included here only to provide historical or anatomical context to our perioculomotor cell group model, and we should still simply consider them to broadly enact the visceral actions of nervous oculomotorius. Finally, regarding the accommodation reflex itself, consider that supranuclear control of the perioculomotor cell group comes from widely distributed areas, which include the supraoculomotor area, which lies within the mesencephalic uh, reticular formation just dorsal to the oculomotor complex, and numerous cerebral and cerebellar smooth pursuit centers. Okay.
Okay, maybe uh, that's enough for today. We will continue on uh, yeah on Sunday. Uh, thank you for coming to my recorded stream and see you soon. Goodbye.